Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what... Okay, guys, I'll stop right now. No worries, Mom. And everybody else out there listening today. I have no plans on giving it my quote-unquote day job. It has become a, prof- me, a professional vocalist. Um, I'm sure I wouldn't have many followers and uh, even less people willing to uh, give away their money to be in the presence of my less than melodious sounds um, exiting my mouth as I attempt to sing. That I'm certain of. But if I could paint a picture for a depiction of how I felt this morning upon awakening, I'd paint some super serene images of the most delicate flowers and Water, you know, blue, pretty water, calmly, gently flowing in, out, in and out. Now, okay, never mind. I can't paint either. But so many of the works of uh, of the French artist Claude Monet, his painting would be a perfect reflection of what I was feeling this morning. The beautiful morning that I sang about earlier. Some of his works are just... I don't know, I say awe-inspiring, just just peaceful. And uh, as accompanying music, or should I say the soundtrack for this setting, um, regarding my singing, back to my singing, or quote-unquote singing, I'd be inclined to, I stand fast that I get it right, that I, that I get it right, you know, singing, you know, I think you guys can feel it, you know, feel me, me singing, that is sometimes, sometimes I would get it right. Um, and I say this, I say this, like I said, stand fast. I say this because I understand that, uh, music is the silence between the notes. Music, music is the silence between the notes. And that's a quote from, uh, the French composer Claude Debussy. Well, both of these artists, both Monet and Debussy, both reigned in their fields many, many years ago. And both seem to have captured the beauty, the true beauty of life. They appreciated it, never neglecting not even the most simple, basic form of their respective crafts, color, and musical notes. They didn't treat one or, or put, put put any anything in a position that was of less importance or um, reverence. It, they treated them equally and they were eager to explore, to, to develop and to share their gifts. Um, I say one still enjoy today, undoubtedly. Today, hundreds of years after the, their deaths, uh, both because, well, because of their determination to, to do what they believed they could, they could do and what they wanted to do and to do well, we're still benefiting from. And I bet neither of the two ever hit the, the snooze button, you know, the, the little snooze button on the alarm clock, um, like so many of us do. Uh, we press the snooze button on something that far exceeds any painting, any composition, you know, musical composition, just simply anything. Many times we too frequently press the snooze button on our lives. Okay, so now you guys are fully aware that I had a great day, a great start. And uh, that's how I like to, to record, um, you know, on a positive note. Um, I'll start now. More traditional. Hello, this is Dawn Melanie. And uh, thank you for joining me today for another episode of my series titled uh, Minute Self. Um, thanks to MSME Radio who allowed me the opportunity to, to uh, 
come to you today. Today, as all of my shows, I strive to share some of my experiences, my angles on me and my MS, how I handle it. Um, I'd say pretty well for the past 20 years. Uh, next month, actually, March 2019 will be my official diagnosis date anniversary. Um, you know, when I found out that I had relapsing, remitting, multiple sclerosis. And she's over 20 years, I just say how things have changed. Some for the worst, which unfortunately we oftentimes focus on too much. But there has been changes for the better. Yeah, I said it for the better. And um, because it can be so, well, because I can be so sometimes seemingly nauseatingly positive, you know, looking at the glass as half full, n never or rarely as half empty. Um, none of them are bad hair days, as each of them are, but they're all independent. They're all independently not that bad. Um, all my bad hair days, I guess, they're not only, not only, well, I'll say not only as ugly a subjective viewpoint, but equally, there's bad, there's good, and there's ugly. So, shamelessly, I say, thank you, MS, for not being so ugly all the time. There are some good, there's some bad. It's not all ugly, it's not all bad. Did I just say Thank you, MS. Did I? <laughs> yeah, I did. That's right. I said, thank you, MS. Just like my mama told me to thank a person when uh, he or she performs an act of kindness, uh, regardless if it's a big or small act. You know, people entering the building before you, you know, I, I understand that they are taking, you know, they're, they're taking, they're only taking probably two to four seconds from entering the entering the the building to hold the door just long enough for you to walk walk in you know effort, I'd say pretty much effortless you don't have to get the door um, you know but they, they take two to four seconds out of your time out of their day but I never go through that door without saying thank you um, delivery of a kind thank you is in order um, then and it equally is in order when uh, you know, actually, I would say something big like uh, I recall a the anniversary meal I had, and um, it was funny because uh, <coughs> we we went all out, you know, steaks and you know our favorite bottle of a uh, Pinot Grigio, and uh, <coughs> went to pay the bill, and the, the waitress she's like, "Oh, no worries." I'm like, "No worries." I mean, she didn't even know it's our anniversary. By the way, it was, it was a dating anniversary. It wasn't even a wedding anniversary, and. Um, she said that the gentleman, the couple that was sitting at the table next to you guys, took care of it already. So I was like, really? It's like, yeah, no, it's already paid. It's probably paid for. Okay, so we thanked her. And uh, we couldn't give thanks to the, uh, the couple who had already exited because they had already left the premises. Um, but, but that energy, something about the energy, the positive vibes, um, I'd say that... She, were generated from this act it was lingering and it's like man it's like kind of awesome so you know it was it was funny it's like we were we were at disney world ironically enough and this was just like kind of like the icing on the cake or the cherry on top you know we're glowing like two big grown kids here um you know here we are the recipients of a super kind act at disney world on our quote unquote dating anniversary in five years dating. Um, you know, we were like, okay, wow, that was super nice and um, how can we like pay it back, pay it forward? You know, people you may hear the term pay it forward. So that happened at Disney World. And um, after that I paid it forward. Now I can't say I did it as big in in such a chunk, but I do I can't say I paid it forward in small increments and I still do. And yes, I have MS, so there's no overflow of disposable income here, um, especially after Big Pharma cashes in their checks. But I can, and I do, smile. I do smile. I give thanks to MS. I smile giving thanks to MS for putting me in a 
situation. So I'm going to say, use some negative terms there, but let's just say it's it seemed an unwelcome situation. It was, but it's one where I'm no longer fearful in a lot of ways for things. Well, or should I say, particularly for time. Um, I'm no longer fearful or uh, feel a slave to time. That is, and I only got 24 hours just like you. It's like we only have 24 hours, and I could use 25. But when I say a slave to time, I mean a slave to that alarm clock. You know, so many of us, I, I recall work, waking up at, oh gosh, 2, 3 in the morning because I had a 6 o'clock flight out of a Frankfurt airport. Um, that was stressful. You know, and I pressed news a few times. No way, I'm sorry. Actually, during that, that I didn't, I didn't go to sleep. I didn't even, I didn't even bother with the alarm clock. I just stayed up all night. I did all nighter. But there's times where before work, I would just press the snooze button over and over again to get a few extra minutes of sleep. Um, why? Like it was gonna make that much of a difference? I don't know. Um, it's kind of senseless because uh, it only meant like it, like a, a normal work day. And I set my alarm clock and I press snooze, you know, two, three, four times. It was silly because it only meant that I had to scurry to the bathroom to uh, shut off the manual alarm clock, you know, the one that was ringing, kind of ringing and echoing and blaring like a, a three alarm fire. I literally put the manual cl alarm clock in the bathroom. That's my backup to my um, digital clock on my nightstand. Um, somebody say it's an overkill, but I can attest that I was never late for work. I say that. Yeah, I'd say proudly, <clears throat> pardon me, that I was never late for work. Um, no matter if I was working locally, different state, um, different country, you know, I, um, I didn't let that alarm clock or the snooze button, or should I say, that? yeah, the snooze button um, have the power. Um, I say I was proud because, you know, with MS, it often steals things like that from us, our power, you know, our, our ability to, jeez, uh, <clears throat> Ability to, to see, to hear. I lost both of those due to MS. Um, you know, but our ability to do a lot of simple things for ourselves. So I'm proud that I can still have power over the snooze button and still never be late for an appointment. Um, my mom is like, you know, it's so funny because my mom actually, I think I'll start with my mom at 6.30 waking me up. You know, she would literally yell. I don't know if she yelled or just said very sternly. It's six thirty. It's time to rise and shine. Well, I think that's kind of what got me into the habit of not pressing the snooze button. I didn't want to hear it again, so I just got up. And to this day, I get up before my alarm goes off, or the first time after it goes off. There's no pressing the snooze button. But I know that's kind of hard because it is available. It, it it's available, and you know some people. Well, most people. <laughs> Just like take advantage of it. Um, it's weird that I don't take advantage of it as much as I should, but I don't know. I, 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 I like to get my day started as quickly as I can because I know that all of my energy is on the, the forefront of the day. So that's probably why I don't employ this snooze button as often as, as most. But understand, I also understand that the snooze button, like, a, like why 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 do we press it anyway? You know, don't want to get up, don't want to get to work now. And, you know, eh, I don't like the people, I don't like the job. Yada yada. It's snowing, it's raining. Um, it's our brains. It's our brains. It's our own resistance that's making us press the snooze button. You know, you don't want to get up. You can get up, you just don't want to. Um, it's our body. It's our body's resisting. Um, you know, the snooze button. Ah, oh, give me five more minutes. Seems like a good thing, right? It can be, but it also can be like a. A, a, a down thing or a bad thing, a negative thing. Um, basically, we're, we're delaying <clears throat> uh, getting real work done that we need to get done, things that we uh, need to make changes, changes in our lives, changes, you know, whether it be our, our, our jobs, our, uh, our medication schedule, our friends, our family, what have you. And pressing the snooze button is our, us delaying anything happening. You know, our efforts are totally minimized on getting it done. 
it it, it to it's totally in line with our digital minds yeah our digital minds are um, just fast-paced reality that we have today uh, where we seem we can have anything I say seemingly we can have anything um, at least you know that's the warm fuzzy feeling we'll get after a few minutes surfing the internet whoa I can have soft supple skin that's tight as a newborn's baby bottom, all for six convenient payments of just twenty nine ninety five. Really, cool. No crepe skin for me. I'm turning fifty, so that's a concern. And wait, I can be one of the three percent of women reportedly, allegedly, not scientifically. I don't know. Three percent of the women who don't have cellulite. Really. <laughs> Uh, really okay mm -hmm. but wait there's even more do you want to buy the introductory or do I want to buy the introductory package the automatic you know renewal subscription after you know every three months or do I want the lifetime member you know guaranteed that my my new rate will never increase more than mm, two times the uh, national credit card average <laughs> yeah yeah that that's really assuring um, Hmm. Okay, and then there's all that other small stuff on to read on these ads, right? But it's sad that at all, all that is said, pretty much at the pace of an auctioneer, you know, like one, two, blah, blah, blah. auctioneers like selling. I say selling pigs. An auctioneer selling pigs, parasailing on blankets, jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge into the ocean. From the coast of Arizona. Got that? Pigs parasailing on blankets off the Golden Gate Bridge, jumping off. Yeah, jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge into the uh, ocean from the Ar coast of Arizona. Yeah, that's what that's what these ads are like to me. Well, that that's that's just means that it's a lot of stuff there, and um, sometimes we just don't take the time to sit and think about it and dissect it and you know, weigh the costs and the benefits. Um, this, that was a silly example, of course, um, but oftentimes it's true. I mean, who knows? Maybe that, um, uh, cream would, um, help me help. Well, see, I don't believe it will eliminate the cellulite, but I know that all it can do is re help reduce the appearance of cellulite. So maybe that cream would help. But, you know, if I want to try, I don't want to try the one month, the two months, the, the weekly subscription, the what have you. See, it's, it's things like this where <clears throat> we, we get overloaded. And oftentimes have analysis paralysis. You know, like, oh, do I do this or do I do that? Or do, I, I don't know what to do. And when we're faced with too many options, sometimes we just fail to pick and just don't do anything. Um, this this could be uh, something I want. You know, I could ask somebody, you know, do you want to lay in bed all day and uh, get five hours extra of sleep? Or do you want to get up and go to the gym and get 30 minutes workout in? Well, I bet you they'd probably say stay in bed, you know. Sometimes it may it may be what you want. Maybe you don't feel well. Maybe it's snowing. So, but the paralysis that I'm talking about is like, you know, have all these options. What do I do? What do I do? And now, you know, you're like going, okay. I, I, you know what? I got a perfect, <clears throat> pardon me, I got a perfect, perfect example. Um, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow for a follow-up. I changed medications after eight and a half years. And um, it's been 28 days since I took the, uh, since I started. And, you know, I know this is one, one, one example of how a lot of people with MS have uh, analysis paralysis. You know, given the, uh, hey, this, by the way, this is a good thing. When I was diagnosed back in 1999, there's only three, three medications out there uh, for MS. So now I think there's over 18 or so. So there's, there's choices to be made. So people are like going, what do you think of this? Or should I take this? And uh, all the questions like that. So some people actually get so confused, they may not take anything or defer um, starting a disease-modifying therapy because of analysis paralysis. So that's just one example of uh, how that can affect us. So, um, you know, I, I I understand that by, by I would say by all means, by all means, totally. And, you know, that choice overload we may have, like today, I mean, 18, 20 drugs picked from, 
I think I'd have a, I'd feel some choice overload there. Um, you know, which one do I take? You know, all the research and things like that would be particularly uh, overwhelming for a newly diagnosed patient. Um, you know, okay, you got to think about, you know, probably start a therapy and then probably think about options that they didn't choose. And you're like, oh, well, man, I wonder if I'm taking this one if I wouldn't be sick on these days or wouldn't feel like this or whatever have you, any of the uh, um, negative side effects that, that they may be experiencing. They're going to think it would have been better, or shall I say the grass is greener on the other side. Um, that's exactly how I felt March 11th, 1999. Um, my doctor said, uh, we have these three medications to take. You guys know what they are. I have an ex-beta serum and put a Paxone. Those are my three choices. Only three. Not much of an option overload at that point, but I do understand today with, uh, I don't know if it's 16, 18, perhaps 20 or more FDA-approved disease-modifying therapies for MS, that can be uh, overwhelming. And, you know, I can understand if someone experiences, <clears throat> pardon me, choice overload here. Um, but I hope they also understand that... Um, Picking something is pretty powerful, not 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 just because it'll help slow the progression of the disease, but it's uh, it's doing something to stop spinning your wheels. You know, don't want to waste energy spinning your wheels. Going, do I pick this? Do I pick that? I mean, do your do your due diligence, do your research, but don't just sit on the fence, please. Not for your um, regarding your physical um, health. You know, you picking something, some disease-modifying therapy, if you choose to, or whatever you do to um, address your MS. Maybe you're going to start a healthier eating regimen. Uh, maybe you're going to start working out, um, eliminating certain foods in your diets that <clears throat> you and your, maybe your doctor have discussed, uh, have known to cause uh, more inflammation. Things like that are, how about this stress? Reduce the stress in your life. Whatever you do, do something about it, and um, don't just spin your wheels because you want to do something to move forward, to move you forward. That means you want to move forward. You don't want anything to stop you. Don't want to stop you. You know, we we all get, we all hit bumps in, you know, potholes and things like that. But things we can still still move. Um, We may not we may not be able to fast forward to the, the future quickly, but um, whatever the future may hold, but we want to be able to get there. So we want to press play. We don't want to press pause. We want to keep moving forward. Um, don't don't get caught up on. I, I need to make a decision. You know, go ahead and do it. Do something and uh, stop ruminating. And just pick something. After research has been done. Um, it works like that for you know, picking our medications. It also pick, works like that for pretty much everything, I think, in life. Um, if, if, if something doesn't feel right after a while, then probably a new direction needs to be taken. Um, it's funny, I, I talk about this MS medication, and a lot of things come up as people are like, well, I'm used to doing a certain thing, and it's hard to change. But, you know, studies... Studies so indicate, you know, but was it 21, 30 days before a new habit kind of kicks in and feels good or feels right? I, I understand that, but it's funny because I understand that, um, you know, it may not, you know, like, like a, a, a disease modifying therapy. You know, it may go fine for a few months or a few years and then things may change. Um, just like life, things change. Um, you don't want to just ditch the whole project, I'd say. You know, maybe you'll stick with that therapy, give it a, a couple more months or so, or maybe we'll change direction and pick a new uh, therapy. Um, I think it's a, that's pretty much how life works, in my opinion. Um, you know, well, like I said, we'll hit the bumps and potholes and things like that, but we can move forward. Um, you know, people... I like, I like to liken it to a record player or... You know, I don't know if you guys remember that, but you know, with MS, it's like, gosh, gee whiz, MS wants to just stop you, you know, press stop, and then we're going on play. MS wants to stop you, um, 
I like to say I've only let it pause me. I don't like it either way, but pause me. But I don't like it to just stop me. And uh, I damn sure want it to inject me, you know, <laughs> just kind of keep me out of my uh, good spirits and things of that nature. You know, make me down and depressed, but to keep moving forward in life. So um, pick something, you know, in everything we do. I, I encourage you all to pick something, uh, commit to it. And uh, if there's anything difficult about it, sit back and maybe, you know, here goes the journal, journalize, you know, the, the pros, the cons, and how it made you feel, how do, how do you feel, and reevaluate. Maybe you need to make a change. And um, I, I think, uh, I, well, I know, I know, I know it's oftentimes stress. So I want to say for this week's challenge, I want to encourage all of you listening to think of two, perhaps three areas of your life that you consider to be stressful. A couple of areas in your life that you think have stress. Write them down and then write the corresponding stress. I say write down, write it down because oftentimes people look at stress and they try to figure out why. So they'll look at the triggers of their stress. But I want you to consider this. Look at stress as an indicator. You know you know how the MRIs, if we have an MRI of the contrast, um, we, we get the uh, gad, gadolinium blue stuff injected in our veins to show, well, that they'll fill up any lesions which are which are having any MS activity. So that's what the, the that dye does. Let's look at stress as an indicator, as as our body's subconscious indicator to, um, well, which actually manifests in a plethora of ways, physical ways. We, we need stress to show the contrast in our bodies, kind of like the uh, MRIs of contrast. The difference is stress helps show us where we are, where we should be, and most importantly, where we need to be. So for everyone listening today, remember the list I referenced earlier, I want you to add these to your list. If you have them, if it applies to you, add these to your list of things potentially causing stress or that are stressors in your life. Obesity, heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, depression, gastrointestinal problems, and asthma. Add any of those that apply to you to your list of things cause, or things corresponding with stress because it's been proven that these are all areas where stress has a bit of factor and, and, and causes it a more, increases the chance of it being present in your life. This has been Dawn Melanie. I do thank you for joining me this week, and I hope you'll join me next week. In the meantime, as always, I do wish you a blessed week. Have a good one, and hopefully a stress-less week.